One in 26 people will develop epilepsy in their lifetime, according to the Epilepsy Foundation. A patient is diagnosed epileptic when they have two or more seizures from unknown causes. Cognitive difficulties, impaired brain development, and other neurological disorders are also frequent among epilepsy sufferers. Normal brain function depends on the organ's nerve cells talking to each other via chemical and electrical signals. A seizure is a surge or break in this activity. According to Epilepsy Ontario, there are more than 40 types of seizures, all of which fall into two major categories, generalized seizures and partial seizures. Generalized seizures result in the involuntary movement of all body parts and usually last a couple minutes. Typically, generalized seizures are hereditary and sufferers have no memory of the event when it's over. Like generalized seizures, partial seizures may cause uncontrolled movements. These seizures are further classified based on whether a person's ability to respond and remember is affected. Many things can cause partial seizures, including head injuries, brain infections, strokes, tumors, or genetics. Frequently, no known cause is found. Because epilepsy is such a broad disease with many classifications, treatments are tailored to patients, and when no approved pharmaceutical drugs work, families are often forced to seek alternative treatments like cannabis. The plant is becoming increasingly popular to treat many types of epilepsy. More specifically, epileptics are consuming cannabis that has been bred to be high in CBD, the main non-psychoactive compound in the plant, and low in THC, the main psychoactive chemical. This treatment became especially popular when news detailing the case of six-year-old Charlotte Figgy came to light. Charlotte, besides being dear to my heart, is a six-year-old. And like most little six-year-olds, <laughs> yep, there's Chase, there's her, si her twin sister. And like, like, like most six-year-olds, Charlotte, she just loves the color pink, loves to, to go play in the woods with her twin sister, Chase, and her older brother, Max. She also happens to be one of the most frequent cannabis users that I know. There it is. There's the word, cannabis. It's a plant that Charlotte Figgy uses a lot of to control her grand mal seizures. And in no uncertain terms, Charlotte's life depends on this plant. You see, Charlotte was diagnosed when she was three months old with a very, very rare and violent form of epilepsy known as Dravet syndrome. And Charlotte will experience a very high number of what we call tonic-clonic or grand mal seizures. About one every 20 to 25 minutes, guys. And these seizures, these seizures will last anywhere from 15 to 25 minutes. So in essence, Charlotte's life is spent in a seizure and catatonic state. Twice, Charlotte's mother, Paige, has had to bring her back to life using CPR. At any given time, Charlotte will be on seven daily different pharmaceutical seizure medications, none of which control her seizures. When Charlotte was five years old, her seizures had reached their worst. And her medical team told the Figgy family things like, start making preparations for her death. She was probably not going to wake up from this. And the Figgies reluctantly signed a do not resuscitate order for Charlotte around this time. And she was sent home with a fitted chair, a feeding tube in her belly as she'd lost all of her life skills. And the family to say their goodbyes. It wasn't the end for Charlotte. And the Figgies weren't about to give up hope. And so when Paige called us that February, told us of Charlotte's condition, we were ready to jump in. We were ready to help. In fact, we couldn't wait until Paige dropped the bomb on us. Charlotte was five years old. And think about it for a minute. We're going to give a five-year-old cannabis? <sighs> Literally, visions of, of this were popping in my head. <laughs> mm. But we got over this pretty quickly, and we began to extract and formulate and ratio a non-psychoactive, lab-tested pediatric tincture for Charlotte. And I'm happy to tell you that within the first administration, Charlotte went from having a seizure every 20 to 25 minutes, that's 400 a week, guys, down to zero to one per week. Thank you. And, and Charlotte was off 100% of her pharmaceuticals. No more pharmaceuticals. Thank you. Charlotte is now awake. She's alive. Please welcome and meet Charlotte Figgy and her parents, Matt and Paige.
Thank you. Can you say hi to everybody? CBD was first demonstrated to have anti-seizure effects in 1973. Scientists also found CBD to have no clear toxicity and no psychotropic effects. Later, in 1980, a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial of 15 patients was conducted. They were given either CBD or a placebo in addition to their existing medication. Half the patients on CBD remained almost seizure-free. Three of the patients demonstrated some improvement, and one had no effect at all. Conversely, only one of the placebo patients showed improvement. Now, Charlotte's not an isolated incident here. We currently treat over 40 pediatric patients here in Colorado with the same, similar, and believe it or not, even better results than what Charlotte experiences. And currently there are over 200 families coming from all over the world to Colorado to take part in our treatment program. We're soon to move into California as well where we literally have over a thousand children with pediatric epilepsy and their families waiting for us. And we'll be moving to other states as soon as laws will allow us. Amen. Give me five. Zakai Jackson, our, our number two patient, right after Charlotte, great friend of ours. Zakai, unfortunately, he suffers from a syndrome known as Doza syndrome. And before this treatment, Zakai was experiencing oh, over 200 seizures a day, okay? I'm gonna happy to tell you guys now, on October 4th in two weeks, we're all gonna get together to celebrate Zakai's one-year seizure-free anniversary. Cannabis oil, especially high CBD oil, is the most common method of consumption to treat epilepsy and other illnesses because of its potency and homogeneity, as well as the fact that it doesn't have to be smoked. Demand has grown for a pure form of cannabis. Edibles, capsules, and vaporizers with concentrated cannabis oil represent the fastest growing share of the legal pot market. Concentrated marijuana also means stronger doses of medicine for patients who have been waiting for relief. Constituency of the oil is uniform, which means that when you consume the oil, you're getting a reliable and repeatable experience in a way that you don't with other formats. Some cannabis companies are experimenting with other innovative ways of administering the life-saving cannabinoid. Since Kaylee was six months old, she's been dealing with seizures. And then in 2012, she was tested and they found out that she had Dreve syndrome, a genetic disposition that one of the main things that it's done in Kaylee's life in particular is that she's allergic to most anti-seizure medications. Kaylee says her daughter started to develop at a normal rate, but after an early misdiagnosis, the drugs doctors prescribed only seemed to increase the number of Kaylee seizures and slow her development. What have some of the side effects been? The side effects have been horrendous. She had a brain scan before she took the drugs. She then took the drugs and she had one afterwards and her brain scan came back that she, her brain was damaged. A friend told Kalei she should look into medical marijuana. That eventually brought her to Open Vape, a Denver-based company specializing in the extraction of cannabis oil and the sale of vaporizer pens to medicinal and recreational marijuana users. In November of 2014, Kaylee was eased off of other experimental drugs and given transdermal patches rich in CBD provided by Open Vape at a discounted rate. Have you seen any side effects from the patch so far? We have not seen any side effects from the patch. And what we have seen is, you know, her alert levels have gone up. Um, her desire to want to do more things from her, for herself has gone up. To watch a child go from where Kaylee is to, um, to where there's a possibility of more and better is amazing. To know that this industry is not just about money and not just about making a bunch of money or selling whatever, but it is about helping kids like my little Kaylee who truly can benefit from something like this, that, that makes the world a better place and it gives me hope. So how does CBD treat epilepsy? Unfortunately, scientists can't say for sure. In the brain, we have a nice balance between what's excitatory and what's inhibitory. We need a balance. If this is out of balance for some reason, trauma, genetic mutation, if you have Dravet's, if you have an infection and meningitis, 
you can upset this balance and you create a differential in tone. So if you have more excitatory tone in your brain than inhibitory tone, that means that your excitatory neurons can be stimulated and less well controlled. So if epilepsy is uncontrolled firing of neurons, then it makes sense that if you accentuate the excitatory tone, you're going to be more prone to have seizures. We think that CBD is actually balancing out this tone with the brain that's seizing. You have way more CB1 receptors. So we're adding CB1 receptor agonists or cabinodiols, and it's starting to do this and help out the system. Well, we don't have any drugs for this. CBD is working on a novel mechanism, we think. Now, while we don't know, it seems as though CBD is actually playing a role in the repair of brain function. And research scientists and our doctors believe that this is why Charlotte, Zakai, and other children in this program are actually experiencing an ongoing progression of motor, social, and developmental skills, meaning that they're actually coming back to cognition more and more and more every day. They're getting better, guys. I mean, it, it's phenomenal. While the impressive recovery stories are numerous, hard scientific studies about CBD and other cannabinoids being used to treat epilepsy are rare, and most are still being conducted with animals. In animal models, both THC and CBD are anticonvulsant, meaning that they can stop seizures. So if you look at just the animal models, the animal models are pretty impressive on how CBD works. They work. For example, in 2012, the British Epilepsy Association published a study showing that CBD reduces seizure severity and lethality in animal models and concluded this evidence strongly supports CBD as a therapeutic candidate for a diverse range of human epilepsies. In 2013, the British Pharmacological Society concurred in another animal study. Unfortunately, human studies on this topic are almost non-existent. There was an R&D meeting at GW Pharmaceuticals and they presented data 16 weeks out from their IND study looking at CBD and epilepsy, mostly in the Dervais population, but also Lennox Gusto. The average age was 11 years. The average number of seizure medications before starting the trial was three. So the definition of intractable epilepsy is the failure of two or more drugs. These kids were on an average of three. They are already intractable. 58 patients were enrolled. So just look at this data. The dark blue is seizure freedom. And if you look, it's pretty good. But as impressive is the decrease in seizure frequency in these patients. So if you had a novel drug and you told the FDA that you had 40% reduction in seizure frequency in a trial, the FDA would approve your drug. Because that is really good. We still didn't control everybody. So there are, obviously there are more mechanisms of how this imbalance occurs that we have to look for, but when we're looking for different mechanisms to control for epilepsy, it looks like this may be a winner and we need to investigate this more. Let's just look at the Dervais population. The N was 12, but when you start looking at this, almost a 60% seizure reduction in this population. That's really outstanding. This is in a population where I can tell you that I know some of the patients and they were on the right meds. They were getting what clinical trials have shown, clobazam, valproic acid, steropentol. That works in this syndrome and yet we see this added benefit. Much of the current literature amounts to little more than surveys given to patients or their parents. These aren't particularly helpful, but demonstrate the urgent need for more research into CBD and other cannabinoids in combating epilepsy. One such study published in 2013 in the Journal of Epilepsy and Behavior found positive results. A survey was given to parents belonging to a Facebook group dedicated to sharing information about CBD-enriched cannabis to treat epilepsy in their children. 
The survey only received 19 parental responses that met the proper criteria. Their children had epilepsy and were currently using cannabis to treat it. 16 of the 19 reported a reduction in their child's seizure frequency. Of these, two reported complete seizure freedom, eight reported a greater than 80% reduction in seizure frequency, and six reported a 25-60% to 60 reduction. Other beneficial effects included increased alertness, improved mood, and better sleep. However, the biggest problem with a survey like this is the lack of control. It's impossible to say what the children consumed or how it was consumed. Other studies published are similarly flawed. For example, at least anecdotally, cannabis is often shown to work for epilepsy when administered in a high CBD oil form, but some studies are done using smoked cannabis with unknown levels of cannabinoids. Predictably, the results aren't very good. There's this one study that looked at 215 patients who smoked and of that, only 7% claimed that their seizures were better. Not scientific, but clearly not something that you would run out and buy your first reefer if you had epilepsy. Data just isn't good. And then this study looked at 63 patients in this total population of 310. 53 reported no effect of the 63. So the majority who smoked there was no benefit. So why the difference between humans and animals? So this is the reason, because the pill that mother gave you that made you small or made you tall got you high. The pill that didn't do anything at all stopped your seizures. So people were smoking concoctions that had high levels of THC and very low levels of CBD because like any manufacturer, you go where the money is and the money is getting people high. So you really don't care about high CBD in your plant. Here's Blue Dreamleaf, given an apropos name, because look at the level of THC compared to CBD. So if you are taking this for epilepsy, Sorry, it's probably not going to work. While the hard science is still forthcoming, many families can't wait for cannabis research and laws to catch up while their children suffer. Consequently, epileptic kids are becoming the guinea pigs. Thankfully, these experiments have proven very successful. Haley has uncontrolled epilepsy and was taking multiple medications to help control the convulsions. Those medications came with severe side effects that really wreaked havoc on her little body. Haley's parents decided medical marijuana was the treatment that could save their daughter, help her significantly. But the family lived in Georgia, where medical marijuana is not legal. So Haley's mom, Jenea, packed up. The pair moved to Colorado, where it is legal. Haley has made remarkable progress. In fact, she said mama for the first time, and her mom caught it on camera. You say mama? Mm -hmm. Mama. Good girl. It's been emotional. We got to meet our child for the first time in two or three years. So the CBD medicine is working fantastic. She's smiling more. She's looking at us. She makes eye contact all the time. And um, to hear your child say mama for the first time when you were told she was never going to sit talk, uh, was it was absolutely amazing. It still brings tears to my eyes to hear it. We have no regrets. We we did what we knew we needed to do for our child. My child quit breathing in January, and I had to do CPR on her. So wow. to say that I could regret making this move, I, I would never say it. Now, I, I can't wait to wake up in the morning to see what's going to change with her because she changes every day. And it's, it's, it's amazing. And I wish more families in Georgia would be able to experience this. And mm -hmm. I, I pray that hopefully lawmakers' minds will change because Haley's proof that this medicine works. And I just pray that more lawmakers see that children are turning around and getting off the seizure medications and coming to life. Millie is two. She used to have dozens of seizures every day, but her rare form of epilepsy has been calmed by a cannabis oil that doesn't make her high. She gets 0.1 ml of CBD three times a day. Legally, Nicole couldn't do this in Tennessee where the family lived. So they sold up and moved across the country to Colorado where marijuana use is allowed. So far we've gone to about a 75 to 90% seizure reduction. 
Um, and along with that, I think one of the most positive side effects has been the cognitive uh, increases she's had. Much more alert and awake. Where'd that shit go, Millie? <laughs> this home video gives them hope. Even the smallest sign of awareness and interaction is a huge step forward. They believe it's down to the cannabis. After all that we had been through with her over the past 18 months, the decision to move out here and use medical cannabis at, at that point was very easy. We'd exhausted all possibilities. Um, so this was kind of our last shot. Caden has lennox gisto syndrome, which basically is defined as uncontrolled epilepsy, multiple types of seizures. Turn the corner. Okay, the rest is you. We exhausted every resource. We tried 20 different combinations of medicine. We came to Colorado to seek medical marijuana. All right, bud. It's okay. You know, we were, we were having 75 seizures, 75 to 100 seizures a day. Is this your medicine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We started Charlotte's Web about four weeks ago. I feel like it's liquid gold. OK, you ready? Mm -hmm. Right now, we're already experiencing like an 85% uh, reduction in the seizure activity, which is just amazing. We've never had that before. Yeah, ironically, I am in charge of all the city of Atlanta's drug evidence uh, that we keep in a, we call it the vault. We house marijuana in there, and then we destroy that drug. So it, it, it's, <laughs> it's interesting to say the least. And I'll, I'll just lay it out flat. I do not know the long-term side effects of medical marijuana <clears throat> in my son. But what I do know the long-term side effects are, are continual seizures in his body and catastrophic epilepsy. He will die. The strict laws continue to be the biggest hurdle for epilepsy sufferers seeking cannabis as treatment. According to researchers who published a study in the journal Epilepsia, the lack of pure pharmacologically active compounds and legal restrictions have prevented clinical research and confined data on efficacy and safety to anecdotal reports and concluded that CBD appears to be an ideal candidate as a therapy for treatment resistant epilepsy. In the U.S., cannabis remains illegal federally and is listed among the most dangerous drugs. However, 23 states in the District of Columbia have legalized medical cannabis, while 12 other states have laws allowing CBD oil. Many of these laws are so new the programs aren't even operating yet. For example, New York is the latest state to legalize medical cannabis. However, the law prohibits patients from possessing cannabis buds. Only oil, pills, or extracts are allowed. Oliver had a stroke in utero and as a result, he has what's called a brain stem injury. So he has a lot of very complex medical problems. Among them are seizures that do not respond like this. Okay, okay, okay. All right, you okay? Okay, all right. All right, come back now. Missy rallied together with other parents whose children were also in need of help. They urged local politicians to meet their children to understand the importance of passing the bill. Missy turned her attention to New York Senator Dean Skelos, who represents her district, even launching a local commercial campaign. Senator Skelos, please don't make us wait another year. Allow a vote on the Compassionate Care Act. She continued her fight up to Albany, leading up to the big decision on June 19th. Medical marijuana has the capacity to do a lot of good for a lot of people who are in pain and who are suffering. We were in Albany Wednesday and Thursday. We heard Thursday morning that they had reached an agreement with the governor. And then we were in the press conference when the governor made the announcement that he was going to be approving this bill. Some of these cases are the most uh, heart-wrenching cases you've ever heard. You're dealing with children, children with epilepsy, babies. The next day, I had gotten a phone call very early in the morning from Senator Skelos' office asking me if I was still in Albany. And I said, no, we had to come home. Oliver was having too many seizures. He was too unstable. And then they called back and they said he would like you to watch the vote. If you were to tell me at the beginning of this session that I would be voting yes on this legislation, I would say to you, no way. And then when he said... But when you meet Oliver Miller from my district, 14 years old, 
And some of the folks here mentioned that they have 10, 12 seizures a day. He has hundreds of seizures a day because as a result of a pre-birth stroke. Calling out my son's name, like, on the Senate floor. Like, he basically, you know, was just saying, like, you know what? This little boy changed my mind. That's worth voting for, the, for this legislation. I was so proud of Oliver, because <laughs> I felt like Oliver is helping thousands of people. The bill is passed. Governor Cuomo signed the measure into law Saturday, July 5th, and held a formal signing ceremony in New York City on July 7th to highlight the new law. It makes total sense for New York State to take this advancement in medical marijuana. This step has lifted, you know, the biggest, biggest hurdle right out of the way. So we're I'm very hopeful. Guam, a U.S. territory, also legalized medical cannabis in 2014. Additionally, medical cannabis is legal in Canada, but only buds are allowed while cannabis oil is prohibited. It's okay. Caitlin's terrifying tremors can last hours and end in death. I live in fear. Okay, I'm gonna call my mom. A derivative of marijuana called CBD may be able to quell these seizures, but the product isn't available in Canada. <laughs> leaving parents like Barry and Shannon Pogson desperate and frustrated. There's not enough THC in this to get an anti, <laughs> so it's, 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 it's frustrating. Up, up, up. We were willing to fly to the moon if we could to, to try and get help for her. Caitlin suffers yeah. from Dravet syndrome, a genetic condition yeah. with yeah. serious yeah. long-term yeah. symptoms. Caitlin's parents are resting their hopes on this online petition, now 1,050 supporters strong, pressuring Health Canada to research the efficacy of CBD as a treatment. This right now is our only hope. But for Health Canada to greenlight the substance, a manufacturer needs to bring forward an application. As part of that, clinical trial evidence is needed. With public support for medical cannabis at an all-time high, changes, while small, are continuing to happen. For example, in 2014, researchers in Colorado began a study examining how high CBD cannabis affects Dravet patients. The study is still recruiting participants, and researchers will continue collecting data until February 2016. Further demonstrating how far we've come, the DEA, the agency on the front lines of the drug war, announced April 8, 2015, that it would allow 900 pounds of cannabis for research this year, tripling production. Despite these advancements, there is still much work to be done. Many states, Canada, and numerous other nations have people who still need cannabis oil or bud to survive epilepsy and other illnesses, but risk fines or incarceration if they attempt to obtain it. I want you all to think about something with me real quick. Charlotte is awake now, okay? After experiencing a five-year darkness and fear type nightmare. I don't know how you'd feel, but me, I'd feel like doing some exploring. I'd feel like seeing the world, getting out there. Well, imagine Charlotte feels very much the same. Yet yeah, picture this. She can't even leave the state of Colorado. If she does, she faces a life and death situation without her medication. Not to mention the fact that the minute the Figgies family, when they leave the state of Colorado on a family vacation with her medicine, they become Drug traffickers, mm-hmm. Yeah, they look like a pack of hardened criminals to me, don't they, you? <laughs> so, you know, we can joke about this, and we can bring light to this, because, honestly, the situation is ludicrous, people. It's ludicrous. Charlotte can't leave the state. How many other children can't get into the state to get this treatment? It's not that easy to pack your whole life up and move from wherever you are in the country or the world for that matter and just relocate to Colorado. And furthermore, they shouldn't have to. Colorado children are not different physiologically than a child who lives in a Midwestern state. And it, it hurts me to tell you this next part, but this is a reality we face all the time here. Just last week, a very special young boy in Indiana with Dravet syndrome passed away because his family couldn't get out here to get the treatment in time. And we couldn't send it to him because the law doesn't allow it. If the law allowed it, 
It's a next day air package. It's that easy. Folks, children are dying. Come on, we can do better than this as humans. We must do better than this. And I'm confident that we will do better than this. Now, just how many more Charlottes, how many more Zakais, how many more children are out there that this plant could potentially provide relief for? This begs us to ask the question, are we willing to change our national view on medicinal cannabis 